hey, hey, everybody. How are you? This is Lakita, and it is our Faith Focus Friday time, and we are excited. Uh, I feel the spirit of faith because I get a chance to, on this particular broadcast, to talk about the Word of God and the power of God, and I'm excited about that because the Word of God, it rejuvenates me, it inspires me, it pushes me, so uh, this is not a, this is our Faith Focus Friday time, and I get the chance to kind of, quote unquote, preach and teach a little bit, and this is going to be a powerful Powerful, powerful, powerful uh, lesson on today. I'm excited that I get a chance to come uh, to you guys. Let me know that you're on. How you doing, my sister Tanya Sawyer's Blessings to you for Faith Focus Friday. The power of the Lord is going to bless us on today. It's going to be anointed. Can't you feel the anointing already? I feel the anointing already. I feel the power of God on our Faith Focus Friday. And I believe that God's going to open up a door for me to be able to be on live, syndicated, regular, secular TV as a talk show host and have my Faith Focus Friday every Friday. I don't care if it's just 15 minutes, but the world is going to get an opportunity to hear something powerful. Michelle Bradley, God bless you. My sister always supporting. My sister Shanti, I love you to the moon and back, but you already know that we need to sneak away again and get us some time away, uh, you and I, so let's make it happen. I feel the anointing, so forgive me. Uh, how you doing, uh, Laura Jackson? God bless you. So glad that you got that job and so glad that uh, the thing that our ministry was able to speak on, you were able to take from and then use it and get the job to God be the glory. And I'm very serious about that. I just had to lift my hands because I feel his glory. I feel his presence. And so we're just going to wait a few more minutes, but this is going to be a blessing broadcast on today. This broadcast is going to be talking about will you be made whole. My brother James Thomas, this is really going to bless you. Yeah, yeah it's going to bless you, James, the fitness man himself. Jim Payton, the photography, uh, photographer for the celebrities, and I'm one of those celebrities, so kudos to you. Yeah, I'm God's celebrity. He made me after his own image, and last time I heard everything that he said came to pass, so I believe God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the glory and the presence of the Almighty. So we are excited and um, I'm just getting all of my little scriptures and things together because we are going to go in and I just, I'm so excited uh, and I get a chance to minister all the time, but this is really my heart. I love to teach the word of God. Something happens when I teach this Bible. And so we're going to get a chance to talk about what needs to happen as we become faith focused in our lives, family oriented and thinking about what God is calling for the body of Christ right now. I feel God right now. And um, I'm not going to start yet. I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes to give people at least uh, minutes to chime in. People have been asking me to, to chime in. And um, so we are, we are here. And uh, I'm telling y'all something's getting ready to be explosive. The thing, how you doing, Richard Cobb Jr.? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Blessings to you. I totally remember who you are. Blessings, mwah. Blessings to you. Uh, stay on this page here. Um, and so we're excited about it all. Uh, are you ready? The anointing is already going to hit you because the believers need to know that we still need the eggs for the wholeness. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm so excited. I'm like leaping out of my spirit because the word of God is going to free us up today. The word of God is going to free us up today. Don't you love me with my green on today? We is we doing it today. Yes, green. That money green. Prosperity, abundance, flourishing, thriving. Uh, you know, come on here. Determined. Uh, we, we doing it. In Jesus' gracious good name, we, we are doing it. So, um... So we thank God for what he's getting ready to do. I'm going to start us off. So those of you that are joining us, my name is Lakita Long, and uh, this is Faith Focus Friday. I am a licensed, ordained minister of the gospel. I am called to be a marketplace evangelist minister in which I have gotten the wonderful opportunity to preach this gospel in secular environments for more than 25 years. And so I'm happy that the people of God uh, across this country that have been a part of what God has crafting for me to do are still saved today. Their fruit still remains. They still love God and moving on in the things of God. And we're just excited to be able to come because I feel a special 
anointing of something getting ready to break uh, free for us tonight. I wanted to give credence to the almighty God. I'm telling you, I feel something in my spirit. Uh, I just want to give credence to God tonight to be able to even teach and to preach this holy gospel. I have never, ever believed that uh, I can do anything outside of his presence. And so we willingly ask for the Holy Spirit on this Faith Focus Friday to come and to be big and strong and demonstrative and to be a teacher, a leader, a guide, uh, and to expose and to give us great um, insight. And so we're praying right now for insight and clarity of his word. No cliche, but the word of God, because God's word is the only thing that can make us free, that can set us free, that can make us whole. And then he's going to show us how we've been hindering our own wholeness simply because we haven't asked. Woo! Glory to God. So let's get started. I want to start us off with the scripture from uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 through 13. The Bible reads, for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. When you've done all you can, then stand. So we came from Ephesians 6, 12 through 13, just as our opening scripture to lay the precedence of what God's word is going to do for us, that if we are in him and we put on the whole arm of God, that we will be able to withstand the evil of our day. So Father, I thank you right now for the power of your Holy Spirit. This is not something that we're just doing by happenstance, but people intentionally chimed in, just as you intentionally downloaded your word in my my spirit for my own self, but also to give to your people and thinking that you are um, our God and you are our Lord and our Savior and that we indeed are your people. So we're asking that our sins and our iniquities and, and the fallacies and the foolishness of our day does not hinder what we need in our spirit, man, and in our soul on tonight. And so I pray right now by the mercy and the power of God that you would allow us to enter into a place that we've never been, to have an encounter that we've never experienced, and to see you like we've never seen you before. May the presence of God woo the person that is all already backslidden in their heart, already turned their minds away from God. May the spirit of the living God penetrate even the atheistic mindset or the Phariseeistic or Sadduc Sadducee-like spirit. May it turn that person's heart around in the name of Jesus to Christ. And may the glorious presence, power of God, rest, rule, and abide even right now. Feel their hearts, feel their homes, feel their cars, Feel their offices, wherever they're at, and when they listen to this message, may the authentic power, anointing, presence of God be present so that they might lift their hands in adoration and say, God be the glory, and to God be everything. So we thank you for this opportunity. Glory to God. We thank you for this opportunity because it's because of you that we live, move, and we have all of our being. So praise the name of the Lord and we say in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brother uh, Ken Koya and my brother Edward Jordan. God bless you. So let's get right into this message for just a few moments. The message was and is, will thou be made whole? And the Lord really ministered this thing to me in a way that's very powerful. So I'm going to rehearse in your hearing two familiar passages that actually talk in a, that talks about a person being made whole. And I'm hoping that while I'm talking about the actual scripture, and I want you to go back to the scripture, you will get a chance to see what it is that you and I do and what it is that you and I do not do. Therefore, we don't reap the benefits of seeing the type of wholeness I believe that we should have. Glory, 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 glory to God. So here we go. We're going to first start at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to start at verse, uh, let's go to verse 21. We'll start at Matthew 15, 21. And I'm reading from King James Version. And we're going to go all the way down to verse 28. 
All right, Matthew 15, 21. So the scripture reads as such. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, him being Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Stop right there. The one thing that the woman did, she came out and she talked about her need uh, for something. But before she said what it was that she needed, she did what? The Bible says that she acknowledged God, Jesus, and she said, have mercy on me. She acknowledged who he was and then named him, thou son of David. Then she said, my daughter is grievously vexed of a devil. So number one, I want you to think that when you really want wholeness, acknowledge God for who he is. Acknowledge him for who he is and just sit there for a second and then say what it is that you want. All right, let's go to verse 23. But he answered her not a word, the Bible says. And his disciples came to Jesus and said, send her away. She cries after us too. And then the Bible says this in verse 24, Jesus answered them and said, I'm not sent here to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The woman came to him, verse 25, and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Now watch this. But he answered her and said, it's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. But watch what her response was. Verse 27, you truthful, Lord, you tell the truth, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Mm. And then Jesus said unto her, woman, thou great woman of faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt, your daughter will be made whole this very hour. All right, so I read Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. I want to just expound for just a second on God's holy word. The question that I ask, will thou be made whole? And many times you and I want wholeness, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. We want wholeness, but I tell you of a truth. We're not asking God for the wholeness. And then we're not doing whatever it takes in order to get it. When she saw who he was, she went up to him, acknowledged who he was, then told Jesus, my daughter is vexed of a devil. He said, listen, I don't have nothing to do with anybody else because I'm called to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The disciples came and he, she, she realized, well, wait a minute, you called to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm lost. She came to him and said, help me. The disciples then said, Lord, send her away. Because she vexed us too. She came after us and all she was doing was going to the people that she thought had an answer. Because they hanging with Jesus. So if they hang with Jesus, yes, they should have the power that he has too. But they sent her away. So then when she saw the man herself, Jesus, she decided, let me go and talk to him myself. And after he said, look, I don't have nothing to do with you. I don't have nothing to say to you. And then she, he said, I can't take the children's bread and, and give it to the dogs. In other words, I can't take what God has given me, and this is Jesus talking, and just give it to anybody that's just out there, don't know nothing or whatever. And she said, you know, that may be all well true. I may not be an Israelite because I'm a Canaan. She's a Canaan woman. She's a Canaanite. I may not be an Israelite woman, but even the crumbs from the master's table falls down and the dogs get it. So in other words, whatever you got left, ah, glory to God. Did you feel that? Whatever you got left, God, give it to me. Give it to me. That's what she said. Give it to me. And he recognized, well, if you got that much faith, if you're willing to take the crumbs, then that means that you're willing to accept the wholeness. You're willing to have what you ask for because you're willing to take it as I can give it to you. And you're willing to describe it in a way that uh, uh, you understand it and that I can grasp. So what I'm sharing in just these verses in Matthew 15, 21 to 28, you and I aren't really asking for deliverance and wholeness in areas. And wholeness is, 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 is the whole essence of being complete. And our faith 
helps us to be very complete in God. And if we ascribe to the scriptures, glory to God, then our faith, as we read the scriptures, believe the scriptures, apply the scriptures, and don't let nobody come and take the scriptures out of our heart, then we will see the manifestation of the wholeness. Do you hear what I'm saying? So let's go over to our second scripture. Oh, I'm getting excited. John chapter five. We're going to read from verses one through seven. Verses one through seven. It's going to bless us. It's going to bless us. John chapter 5 was still asking the question, will you be made whole? Aren't you tired of not seeing the wonder-working power of God in your own life? Forget it trying to happen in the church. Look, we are the church. I need to see something that I can't even describe because God's been so good to me. Glory to God. I need to see something in my own life that is indicative of God's wholeness in my life. So I need to line up everything that I can personally line up. If I got to get this this flesh under control, flesh get under control. If I got to shut this mouth and not speak when I want to and get quiet, then I need to shut this mouth and not speak because he said it's better to be slow to speak than to speak quickly. And you're going to do it with the spirit of anger and rash and harshness. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says in John chapter five, verses one through seven, after these there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called the, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, folk that ain't moving. They blind, halt, withered, and waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4, for an angel went down at a certain season and time into the pool to trouble the water. And whoever got in there first after the water was troubled, they were healed of their disease, whatever they had. Verse 5, and there was a certain man that was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, the Bible says lie, when, he, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there now a long time in that case. Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? And I ask you, will you be made whole? Aren't you sick of going to bed with stomach aches from crying over who left last year, last week, or what job wants to terminate you, or how you feeling and how you're doing? Aren't you tired of that? I asked the question. So then the scripture then says, in verse 7, now watch this. The impotent man answered Jesus and said, Sir, I have no man excuse when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. Now watch this. We're going to keep going for a little bit. Hold on one second. And then after that, Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Immediately, the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. So we know what happens after the story about the Jews starting to confront Jesus and say, oh, you healed a man on the Sabbath day. And then Jesus confronts them. I just want to stop at verse 10. So I read for you Matthew, I mean, uh, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. I just wanted to give us a picture view of how we do also. We make so many excuses in our life about why we cannot do, why we won't do, why we won't get up and do. And Jesus didn't even have to lay his hand on the man, nor did he have the man to get into the water. Jesus simply said, hey, rise and walk. And at the hearing of the word came coming from Jesus, the man got faith as if um, somebody was reaching out their arms to him to lift him up. And he got up and he walked, right? So here's what I'm asking you today. And just for those that don't understand, an infirmity is, is a physical or mental weakness, a disease, an ailment, it's a sickness, it's an affliction. But watch this. I researched it and an infirmity is also a complaint. Lord help us today. It's a complaint uh, and it's a condition that's brought on and that weakens the system uh, and, and creates disease. So an affirmity uh, creates disease because it weakens the system. So when your mindset 
is not strong in the things of God, does not remember what God's word says, lo and behold, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. Uh, trust me, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I won't let your seed beg for bread. He said, if come unto me, all you that are laden and heavy laden and burned, I'll give you rest. He says, take of my yoke of me, learn of me, and for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He gives us all these scriptures, but we don't believe it. And when we don't believe it, it weakens our system. It weakens our spiritual system so that when the things of the world come in, it can rob, steal, and kill all the things of God because we're not strong, glory to God, whoo, in him. But I want to stir your faith today that you have to not only want to be made home, you've got to decide today is the day I'm getting up out of whatever I'm sitting in, whether it's excuse, procrastination, lack, limitation, misunderstanding, wherever you've been, get out of it. Ah, glory to God. I'm trying not to speak in other tongues because I need for the world to hear me in English because you need to get up from where you are. It's not even about a new year. It's just another day that you need to make a decision according to God's word. Be it unto you. He said, be it unto you. Take up your bed, rise and walk. And he didn't want you to just get up. He wanted that man to get up, take where you've been so you don't have the comfortability of wanting to go back and then walk. Walk so you remember from which you've come from, but that you have a victory in your spirit to see where you're going. So you can't lay there and talk about you've been healed. You got to get up from where you are. Trust me, I have seen the fire, have gone through it all, but I ain't talking about where I've gone through. I'm talking about that he brought me out. He brought me out completely without a doubt. You know why? Because First Peter 2 and 9, he says, look, I'm a peculiar person. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And he called me out of darkness into his marvels. Like if that be true for you, believer, saint of the most high God, you better start acting like it. And you got to get fixated on wanting to be whole from the inside out. You can't talk about that it's Monday. You got the blues or Friday and you're feeling some kind of way. We ain't feeling no kind of way, but the way that we ought to feel so that God can get the glory out of our life. Is he getting the glory out of your life? I want to know. Is he getting the glory out of your life? He can't get it out. If you're moping around and woe is me and I don't got nobody to help me and I don't got a husband and I need somebody to cover me and I need somebody to protect me and my bank account is low and my friends are few and all of these things and God's like, wake up, William. Get your mind in order. Get your spirit in check. Pick up that Bible and make a decision. If you're going to live for God, the Bible says pick up your own cross and follow him. If you ain't going to follow him, quit talking about how good God is only when you need him. Like a temperamental and schizophrenic person, bipolar. He ain't bipolar. God is consistent and he wants you and I to get disciplined and consistent and wanting to be whole. Everything in you should want to be whole. And let me tell you something, and I'm figuring this out. When you come to a place, glory to God, eee, like God's word says, that woman in chapter 15 of Matthew, her thing was, look, I know who you are. You're the son of David. You're the only one that can help me. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to acknowledge who you are. And you know what? If you only want to give me the crumbs like a dog, I'll take that too because I ain't proud to take whatever you got. Because whatever you give me, whatever you say, it shall be done. And that's where we need to be. We got to stay humble. We got to stay in a space where God can bless us, where God can minister to us. And we have to ask for something. Something different. I was talking to my pastor today and working on some stuff uh, for the church and, and, and I was talking and he was sharing something and I love the season that I'm in right at this moment. And he said, let me ask you a question. He asked me a question and he said, are you asking God big enough for what you really want? And that thing just convicted me because I'm always encouraging everybody else. I've been evangelizing since I've been 15 years old. I've been speaking into people's lives. I've been laying hands on the sick and God has brought the people out of their sickness. Did you hear what I I said, God brought the people. I ain't got no power. I trust him to do what he needs to do in me that I might be a vessel. So I said to the pastor, I said, you know, I think I am. But when you said it, my spirit got convicted that maybe I'm not asking God for big enough. And let me tell you something, people of God, we aren't. Because some of the things that we need from God, we haven't asked him and they're small. We, we, we're not asking for the big things in God. And you know why? Because we're not asking even for the smaller things just to be made whole. 
be made whole in my mind. Just one full week where my mind don't go crazy. And that's because you keep your mind stayed on him. Isaiah 26 and 3. He said, if you keep your mind stayed on him, he said he'll keep you in perfect peace. You don't got no perfect peace. I guarantee you, your mind ventured off of the Lord and the promises of God. I told myself this year, God, I want to see you do something that only you can do. I want to be able to say, ain't nobody could do that but God. Ain't nobody did that but God. But I got to be made whole. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I say be made whole, I'm not talking about look it. Ah, glory to God. I'm talking about everything in you to where people can see God has made you whole. No matter what is going on. Your wholeness is not indicative of what you're in. Your wholeness is indicative of what you believe. Ah, glory to God. It's what you believe. It's what you believe by faith. You can speak to the mountain, be thou removed, and the mountain has to get carried into the sea. So if you and I mm, 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 want to be made whole, you got to get desperate. You got to get desperate for God. You got to have your own shut in at your own house. When was the last time you fasted for three days with just water? I promise you, I don't care what's going on. Every believer should be hitting the knees. Get prostrate before God. Get on your knees. Talk to God. Get down on your knees till God answers you. I don't care. Talk to God. If you don't need to talk to God for yourself, then talk to God for me. My name is Lakita Denise Long, and I need your prayers. Talk to God for my church, Bethlehem Apostolic Word of Faith Ministry. Talk to God for my ministry, Wake Global Outreach Ministry. There's something that the saints can get on their knees about. Get prostrate. Put your face to your own carpet at home. Tell your children to put the blanket over you so you can seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. For when you call upon him, he will surely show up. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm really pushing it because we've got to get into a space where we make no more excuses about why we're where we are. And trust me, I've made many excuses. Oh Lord, I'm going through this. And many of the excuses were very valid. But I'm telling you, when we call on the name of the Lord in the time of trouble, the Bible says, my testimony says, your testimony said that he will deliver us out of them all. Glory to God. And you know what? That's right. You got to want to be made whole. I dare you to lift your hands. And if you're driving, don't lift those hands. But I dare you to say, Lord, make me whole. And then you got to identify where you need the wholeness. God, make me whole. Make me whole as a mother. Make me whole as a woman. Make me whole as a wife to be. Make me whole as the friend that I'm going to need to be to my friends. Make me whole as the friend that I'm going to need to be to my husband. Make me whole, God. Make me whole in my speech. Make me whole in my business exchanges. Make me whole in my fiscal management, my money management. Make me whole in how I preach this God. Make me whole. You got to ask God, good on my shape. You got to ask God and then you got to determine, I need it. This ain't a church thing. This is a God thing. This is a God thing. You need it before you get to Sunday. Sunday may not come. You need to be made whole now. Now is the time. I need to be made whole. I need to be made whole. I need God. I need God. And I need him because he said, if I call upon him, he'll answer me and show me great and mighty things that I know not about. And so I called upon him. And he answered me. And he's faithful. And he's true. I'm telling you, some of these things that you and I, the believer, are dealing with is because we're not made whole. Glory to God. Mm. We're not made whole. I look at myself, and I, I didn't got so serious. I think I'm going to scare my, my children. I didn't got serious about transforming this body. And I'm going to stand up so y'all can see. Oh, yeah, we is getting it all together. Do you understand me? I said no more, nothing. I want all of it. I still got 40 more pounds to go, but I want it all off. I ain't sucking nothing in. I want it all off. I said you can't do what you need to do if you're not whole. And wholeness is not indicative of one area. It's every area because it all links together. So if I'm not whole in my money, I ain't whole in my mind. Because something's going on in my mind that won't make me be disciplined about my money. Come on here. Let's just tell the truth and shame the devil. You ain't whole no area if every area is all crazy. When you get one area hooked up and you do what you're supposed to do, everything has to line up. That's what I do know. I do know that. So while I'm looking, glory to God, at my life, ah, 
Make me whole, God. And when I look, when I look, when I look, I say, God, I want to be whole all across the board. I want to be whole in my speech. I want to be whole in how I preach this gospel. You got to want to be whole. And you have to create an atmosphere where you worship the king. We see that with the woman. Uh, uh, she Even the woman at the well, when she recognized who he was, she dropped the pot, the Bible says in John chapter 4. She dropped the pot and then she ran. And the Bible says she told everybody that there was a man and became an evangelist and, 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 and fled from that space, but ran right into her destiny because she met wholeness. She met wholeness and she embraced wholeness. So I ask you the question again. Will you be made whole? Don't give no more excuses. And forget a church hurt. You ain't been so hurt by a church. Can't no man, what can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? Ain't nothing supposed to separate you from God. Ain't nothing supposed to make you feel any kind of way about anybody because your thing is not towards them. Your offering is towards God and God's looking at your heart that you have towards them. And he's going to judge you according to how you operate, not based on what they did to you. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Bible says, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. If you be of the household of faith, then you will suffer. Glory, high. Yeah, yeah, my God. And I'm telling you, the suffering may come from anywhere, from the church house, the crack house, the whole house, your job, your house, whatever house. But to know that God is for you is enough. It is enough. So on this Faith Focus Friday, yeah, glory, I feel an anointing in this place for this Faith Focus Friday. I pray that your spirit of Ashandom, that your spirit man gets connected with the real essence of that thing that you ain't really told nobody about that you really need some wholeness to. The real essence, you know, I'm just going to, I'll just confess it. I'll confess it. I, one of my areas was, I was like, Lord, am I ever going to get married again? And I really just kind of gave up that whole little notion, to be very honest. I just kind of was, I, it just ain't going to happen. I, I'm not looking for some him to be, you know, um, I am looking for him to be great, but I, I, I just was like, wow, maybe I just, I don't know. And so one day I was talking to the Lord and the Lord spoke to me under no uncertain terms. And I said, well, what, what do I need to do, God? What do I need to do? And the Lord spoke to me and said, make sure every area in your own life See, the world and even in the church, we got this thing all wrong. We're telling people, make sure you got good credit and this and all those things are great. Trust me. But none of that is great and none of that would actually take place if you're not made whole. And the Lord really spoke to me that while I'm healed from my divorce and healed from all kinds of stuff or whatever, the trauma of loss is perpetual, painful, and there's a level of memory attached to it. And you don't know until you go into the recesses of the spirit and the presence of God to find out that, whoa, there's still a little bit of something there, right? So the Lord showed me, he said, let me really heal your your heart and your soul, your soul more. And let me make your soul whole. Asha, edarabasha. And as I began to cry out to God, I felt some break. I felt some break. And, uh, and then the Lord told me, he said, listen, stay in the moment. Stay in the moment right where you are. I promise you, I'm going to hook you up. And trust me, the Lord is hooking me up. And I'm smiling as if it's right here in front of me as it pertains to that area of my life. Because it is like it's right here. I believe the word of God. So I'm just going to keep myself as unto the Lord and keep myself desiring to be whole and walking in my wholeness. And watch God do what only he can do for you and I. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ that this message would be an absolute blessing for those that would hear, listen, and obey. That you don't just hear it, but that your spirit man will become in connection with the word of God that was preached out of the book of John chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And then we looked at a variety of different other texts coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 through 13. And then we were able to contextualize it with some other scriptures from Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And then we looked at also... Uh, the scripture that was found in Isaiah 26 and 3. I love God's word. And most importantly, I love God's people. And that is God's people everywhere. And I want us to be faith focused. And I want us to have a solid encounter with God so that we come to a place. Asha, eh, I just feel his presence, y'all. Let me tell you something. Come to a place where wholeness 
behooves us to be what God's called us to be in these last and evil days. And get so focused that you're not concerned about what the world is saying because you're too busy trying to do what God is saying right now, right now. So I pray that this time in God's word on this Faith Focus Friday has absolutely been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me to be able to share this word and to trust God for the more of what only he can, will, and shall do. May the grace of God cause your inside to scream out, Lord, make me whole. Yee, hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, I wish I had some keys to somebody's church or something. Because real revival needs to hear, and it is coming. But it's going to start with us in our bedrooms and in our living rooms, asking God the one little question, Lord, I want to be made whole. And then hearing what he says on the other end, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Thank you so much for joining us on our Faith Focus Friday. I am your host, Lakita Long, and I pray that the word of God blesses your spirit, your life, and your home. God bless you. And God keep you, America, and the world around it. That is my prayer. Love you so much. God bless.